my husband Yusuf. We didn't plan to let him. We found some flowers in the front of the street, but they were so tall that when the wind comes, in the squirrel. And, uh, and, uh, when I painted this, I put a pair. I have to put a pair of so Somehow I didn't like it. So I corrected, and I like it. So you see, there is a way to correct watercolor. And uh, you could correct it and you find a way to make it look more pleasant. Um, this one was a demonstration. Uh, I've done a demonstration. I don't even remember where, because I took quite a few demonstrations. And this, it's, my husband and I go down Compton River and walk, and not like, not yet, because of the flood. <laughs> but we do go. It's a nice place. It's called a, a river walk in Windsor, and it's walking through the Farmington River that goes into, not Farmington River, yeah, Farmington River goes into Connecticut River. That's nice. But after you do portraits a lot, you get tired of doing things. So you decide to take a brush and do something, pour the paint and do this, something different. This was done 25 years ago. When I was cleaning on the basement, I said, gee, I could do something with it. So I work on it, and I kind of like it. It's different. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that paper is a little fragile. Uh, it's watercolor. But when I tried to put some watercolor, it did not accept it. So I think there could be some oil in it. I don't remember what it was because it's a mixed medium, but it looks like a watercolor. Yeah. It can't, it's watercolor. This one I just finished last week, and this is a, a place in Elizabeth Park. Anybody who goes to Elizabeth Park, behind the pond, there's the secret forest, and this is the Cypress Street. The Dumont, uh, a famous, he designed the Bushnell Park, he designed the Elizabeth Park, he, des uh, he designed the New York uh, Central Park. He came in. and every time he designed a park, he always introduced different trees, and that's what he introduced the cypress. So this is behind the bridge when you go into to the restaurant, you pass by there, and you go to the restaurant, uh, the Elizabeth Park, mm -hmm. nice lunches there. Yes, the Palm House. I do that to unwind, to make me ready for the other. That's why I had to do that. So I could not just jump in and think. Uh, this was, we were picking apple up in, uh, what was the name of that? Granby. No. Apple, we pick a, 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 a Johnny Apples. Johnny Apple seed. And uh, there's a big cornfield and then there's, we have to walk down to the other orchard. So I just sketch it and uh, put a bit. I got the, so I get inspired from different places. Iris, I spend a lot of money on buying an iris bulb. And the flowers, the problem is the flowers are so big that they keep breaking. And uh, but anyway, this is one of the iris from my garden. I just enlarge it. And uh, done a couple of times. I didn't like the first time, so I've done it. So, and when I do it, I keep thinking of composition, because sometimes I do composition is I'm doing it, not necessarily. Sometimes I think I draw, make a sketch. Sometimes I don't. It depends on the mood I am. That's how I think. So this is, um, it was a watercolor, which was a failure. <laughs> you all have that. And uh, I decided to use, uh, I use watercolor, it's like a wipeout. You know, like you wipe out and it, when you type in, you have to correct. It's a correction white, but made for watercolor. And I used that and I made an abstract out of it. And I, I'm kind of fond of this picture because just came out of my head. I don't know what. It was a, a different landscape with trees and everything, and I just cover it up and do it over again. Um, the picture on, on an easel, it's when I won the national show of watercolor. I uh, tried last year in May, 
in Springfield, in some of the others. Oh, when you pick up the charcoal. The most award is my charcoal powder exercise. I use charcoal powder, I put it on the paper, I drop water, and whatever it tells me, I work into it. Uh, I never know which direction I'm going. But I like it because it's not abstraction. And take it or leave it. I mean, it's just one of those things. It, it just happens. That's about all my different What about this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, Winter this, season? This is, no, this is just an exercise to do a Christmas card. Not necessarily. Okay, what I'm going to do is this picture I'm, uh, that I took in Vinyl Haven, Maine. It's an island. You go to Rockport and then you take a boat, you go to Vinyl Haven, and there's quite a few islands there. Anyway, um, when we were there, this part of it too. When we were there, uh, my girlfriend's husband works for FBI, I guess. And he had the day off, and he took us all of the cars, showing all this beautiful little spot that people don't go, and this was fun. I've done this picture before with a, with a different boat, and I'm going to do it again for demonstration, and I'm going to keep it simple because a normal demonstration, you cannot really finish a painting. You know that. Well, some people do. Anyway, what I've done, what I've learned in Europe, when it comes to measure, I don't take a ruler. I taught my students measure with a pencil. You know how I used to, when we used to do portrait, you used to measure the, the, uh, between the chin and the nose this much. And everybody's different. So there's a rule of regulation, one third, one third, one third. But everybody, it's different. Some people have shorter nose, some people longer nose, longer chain. So that's why you measure. Well, what I do with this, it's measure. How many times does this picture at the end of the boat, there's a boat there in the shadow, fits into in the painting. So I go like this, one, two, three, and a quarter. So what I do, I've done a little sketch for the boat. I do one, two, three, and a quarter. So just enough to give you position of the painting. Then I, I figure, how many times does this space from the end of the boat, I'm going to put on the picture there. The end of the boat, many times fits into the boat. So it's one, one, two, two and three quarters. So the boat is two and three quarter long in the space is a, a one, one space. Three spaces and three quarters. So then I do another thing. How many times does this from the boat goes in inside? Oh, I told you, three and a quarter. And then I do it this way, one, two, three. So this is one third, one third. The problem is in composition, you do not divide anything equal. So it's up to us to give a little bit more on one space or one size than the other. So you have you didn't divide the picture in three uh, in three thirds, like three stripes. It's okay if you do an abstract, but we're not doing an abstract. Okay, so um, I just sketch it in very lightly, just the shape of the boat. Uh, and the reason I done that uh, to know exactly where I'm going from. I'm gonna wet wet my sky, oh, I might draw a little bit, okay. This is the one third, this is my water. This is my water, I, and I don't use heavy pencil because in watercolor, when you use heavy pencil, it smudges into your paint. So try to use an H pencil. Now, I tell you to use an H pencil. This is a big pencil because I just grab a big pencil. But H pencil, yeah, this is better. H pencil doesn't leave residue, like in charcoal, when you do a charcoal, uh, and then you do oil on top, we used to remove the charcoal, just enough shade so you could 
the gold with turpentine. Okay, this is my drawing, this is the line. This is what comes over over here. I'm not measuring, but it's just, and this is a contour drawing. I don't let my pencil out of the paper. I just let it work the way it wants to work. Okay, maybe that's it. That's my drawing. It's done. Isn't it easy? Make it simple for yourself. I use my sky, uh, sky um, one inch brush and I wet my paper. H pencil is going to live through this? It's going to yes. stay on there? Yes. Oh. Because it's so it's light you won't see it. Yeah. But the, uh but this I use a HB pencil and uh, it's making a dark line. It might it might interfere with my paint. Then you have to hand. erase it or I couldn't erase it somehow. Oh. I did not have a good eraser or it just the pencil was too wee, it was which too too dark. Now I'm going to do the sky. I want it, well, the photograph looks pink, but I'm not going to do pink. I'm going to do, I'm going to use cerulean blue, because I love cerulean blue. If you have too much water, what you do, you take a, a towel, you roll it up, and then you just lift up some of the water, okay? This is a trick that I have. Um, my sky, I don't know what my sky is. Okay, it doesn't matter. Because if I don't follow, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be slave or a photograph. This way, if you make a mistake, it's okay, nobody can prove it. <laughs> so be free, don't be slave or your photograph. Oh, I have students, but that's, that has a line in there. He says, yes, it does. So, <laughs> uh, I wanted you to be more free. So this is the water, this is the green, and this cup. I'm gonna put a patch of pink in there. Uh, yeah, like if it's either sunset or sunrise, I don't know. Feels good, let's put it that way. And maybe a touch of yellow or raw sienna. I use raw sienna light because it's a transparent color. By transparent, you put color over and that doesn't block your color that you put on top. That's 
too much. I take a Kleenex. I just wipe it gently. And there's a red spot in there. I don't like it. I lift it up. Always never leave a corner white. If you leave something white in a corner, your eyes, it takes your eyes out of the picture. You want to keep your, your focus inside the picture. So I'm darkening this with a little cold warm blue to keep my eyes inside the picture, not to go out. I see a little bit of uh, sky through the tree. So I forget about the tree and I put a little color of blue in there. So when I pull my color green, I see some blue sky coming through. You got the trees in front, the sky is behind, and that's what I'm doing, something behind. Okay, now I'm gonna do those pine trees in the distance. I find out that somehow they always run down. So I might have to take and turn. Oh, I got two of them, how about that? Oh, one it's no, one it's old, see? But they, I, I use them. I have special brushes. I don't have to use them too much because they're so expensive. But I'll use it for demonstration because I like the result. There's pine trees, but they're in the distance. If I make them like the tree, Cool color goes back, warm color comes forward. Always remember, color perspective. So I'm going to make a cool green, a bluish green, because the atmosphere, the sky, will take some of the color away from the green. And what I'm going to do, turn the paper upside down, I'm going to dark the color on the bottom and let it run into the top. Here I am. Not quite enough. And I pull it down. See, I'm pulling it down. Dark it on the bottom to give a foundation. Pull it down. You see those blue spots with a line? That's because I did not activate my color. You have to learn to activate your color. Mix and go, especially in watercolor. If you don't, you're going to have a line. Then I take a different brush. And I do the oriental drawing of a pine tree. But drawing, I go, I, I draw a line, then I go sideways. See how I twist my brush? of the pine tree without really telling you it's a because if I look at the picture I know it's a pine tree because we know what a pine tree looked like but really we don't see it we just see it. Um, you have to learn to squint a lot if I squint I see just a shape and don't worry if it's not exactly <laughs>
I also think I might be crazy, but that's beside the point. <laughs> And make sure you sleep some sky holes. Well, we got plenty of sky holes now with the trees. <laughs> but sky holes is uh, you you leave that. Remember I said wanna put some blue in the sky? See that gives a little life. Now this is the beginning. I might have to go back. I got green and red. I don't know how, but that's okay. All you do, take water or wet, wet a brush, wet it, let it stay one second, lift it up. Red might be a little bit more stubborn, but we could fix it later. But see, I have a variation of color, and it moves. You cannot have all one color. I think that's a mistake a lot of people do sometimes. Put all one color and then say, oh, I'll go back. In watercolor, you cannot do that. I mean, if you go back, you're going to have a different feeling. I'm putting some darker inside because watercolor is a dry, so it dries lighter. Okay, this, this is what I'm going to go. Let's see. Well, then I have some of those little spikes. In there. Give me a feeling that those are the pine trees. Uh, there's some blue water. So when you do flat water, when you do water, this, I was down on the bottom, I'm looking up. You put a dark line in the water, leaves a white edge if you can to separate the water from the landscape of the land from the water. When you make a line, then you pull your water down. You don't do this. You pull your water down. I don't, I, oh, I got more land in between. Okay, I'll just fix it. I didn't see the land. I'm talking. That's okay. No problem. I'm going to take a brush, clean my brush, dry it, and lift up some of this, this and give it some, some landing land between the water and the trees. See how you could do that? By clean brush, lifting up the color. Keep the color clean. That's most important. You gotta get a darker edge between the water and the land. <laughs> now that I lift it up, I'm gonna make a darker edge here. It's a little bit wet. I should have let it dry, but I'm still pulling it down. See? Pulling it down. Not all over. See, it really gives you a feeling of distance. And that's what you gotta learn. It's a feeling of this. And now there's some rocks formation here. <coughs> I guess I'm facing on one side. Huh? Must be one side the person today. This rock, but I'm I'm dragging the paint by the brush. I'm not painting it like this. I'm dragging it, and by doing this, I get some dry spot in the rocks. circle like. That's 
time I thought she was out in other places. I'm just putting a, a tone down because I want to know where I'm going. And right at this moment, I'm not sure where I'm going. Now I'm doing this. But then there's a back chin and a back, so I'm going to put that. I use the ultramarine blow and burn sienna. It makes a beautiful dark. Now, this is quite dark, I know that. And I'm trying to leave those sky holes that I spoke to you about. Yes. Does that mean um, before you put it on the 
before you put on the paper. In I your palette. I'll show you, I show you what, I'm, what I'm talking about. I took a workshop with a uh, international person up in uh, for three or two sections. And he says that he finds the student who don't activate the color, this uh, prefer in only water color, okay? Because in oil you can mix it with linseed oil or acrylic, you mix it with water and you don't. But let's say I take a little crimson. And uh, I don't have enough water and I pick it up and put it down, it's going to leave a mark on the paper and that it's hard to remove. Yeah. These dots, it's you, it's you don't want them there. And if you not mix the color good, and if you can mix them on the paper, you're going to have a hard time to remove those spots. So you've got to mix your color with enough water so they are blend in, and that's why it's called activating the colors. I'm working from the top to bottom, but I'm going to skip now. Um, i got enough color in there, and I don't have to worry about too much Oh, I'm going to finish up there because I wanted to go into the boat. We have water in here. Dirty brushes. You're good. Now, I'm putting my brush down because there's a land that's coming down. It's not going up. In this water in here, and there's some rocks which is good. It stopped the dirt from going into the water. Rocks are very simple to do. Keep it simple. Darken the bottom, lighten the top. The top because, again, just like the tree, they receive light. So I'm, put, I'm lifting it up. They receive light from the sky. I'm taking a Kleenex. I use that a Kleenex. I don't like paper towel too white because there's texture in paper towel. And when you put a texture, it, it might work in some cases, but some cases it might not. <laughs> Always start from the bottom to make a rock. My rocks were not the best rocks I ever used to make. When I was studying with Zimmerman at the University of Oxford, she says, Lucy, your rocks look like potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, they do. He said, they look shaped like all the rock. And he says, if I walk on those rocks, my feet will sink in. So make sure you make them feel like they're rough. That's the best lesson, the best compliment. I thought it was an insult at that time. I said, gee, I don't make potatoes for rocks. But you know, sometimes a little critique, even if you don't like it, it's good. And when I painted at Rockport, the rocks were closer to the sky. There was water and rock. But in Schlem used to say, always put a touch of blue on top of the rock because they're closer to the sky. Reflection of color. So. And um, um, we'll put a touch of wood. Here's a cool color. These the rocks. And then the water. Now, I got to make, see the dark water there? It's going to be reflected in the inside. I see a, a smudges there, but 
that's how you learn, by making mistakes. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. If you're afraid to make a mistake, I have people come over the brush. God bless them because they don't have the patience. They go stroke by stroke. It's perfect for them, but I can't do it. I, it's not my personality. What is it, Socrates say, know thyself? If you know what kind of person you are, stick to it. Don't try to imitate somebody else because you just not can't. Your personality comes true. Well, I'm a little sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't t tell you that, but that's, you know, I just. More, I, I like to say more relaxed. That sounds better, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Rocks in here, a, a dark line in here. A dark. Let's, com let's mix the dark go in some place. Let's not make them all down and below. Let's blend them in so I give a, a different type of formation of the ground. You know, I was there in that place maybe two, three hours. But it's not the photograph as much. It's the memory. We all take pictures in our mind and we storage and sometimes they come through, they come back. Because sometimes I want to say, gee, how did I do that? Why did I do that? It's because it's in my mind. It was there before. I just didn't pay attention. Okay, I'm going to do a big brush, and I'm going to do the water. Just a little bit of water. I'm going to wet the paper. I, I talk and answer myself, you know. Water here. This the rocks there and over there. If you see the water, it's very dark, the reflection of water. Like I said before, you make you draw you make a line of the water and then you pull it down. because I didn't mix the color. See, I make mistake too. I tell you not to do that, but I make it also. And you pull it down. It's the secret of the reflection. Don't go this way, because it's a standstill lake. It's not moving. If the wind, if it was the ocean, the wind moves the wave, and then you will see it. Oops. Oh, that's wrong. I see the sky in here. So that's wrong. Pay attention to see. Tell you, don't do what I do. <laughs> Oops. Did I want that? No. I want it white in there. I want it white. Oops. Too much water. Too much water. Because it's watercolor, does that mean it's easy for the paint to bleed, or is that a bad term? Because it's watercolor, it's the most difficult subject. Watercolor, it's not like oil. You make a mistake, no problem. You put a paint over it. Pastel de Centina, Grill de Centina. Watercolor, you have to keep it watercolor. I mean, you can see watercolor in a different manners. The pitch in the middle, or oh, the abstract. That was a watercolor painting that failed. Then I go back with the paint. So it's still hope. But, if I, but now it's, uh, it's still watercolor because uh, uh, the medium that I use, it's like wash. And wash, it's watercolor base. The binding to hold the watercolor, it's the same thing as the watercolor. Like in Lindsay oil will bind the oils, or pastel will bind itself. 
Does water, the water color absorb quickly, right? It depends on the paper you have. Oh, okay. I so it's hard to make a clean up if you make a, you know, yeah. you make a, an error. Would it be hard to clean up? Well, when you, when you do a painting, if you leave an edge like this, see that I bet you didn't go over? Oh, yeah. Then it's hard to correct. So then what you have to do when it's dry, you wet the paper and you go back and soften the edge. But it's, you know, it's still, you make it, it's, what they say, if you get one out of 20, you're lucky. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So sometimes we do. I have people in my class, they come in in my class, they expect a painting every night. And I say, God bless you, because I cannot do that, but if you want to, I'll help you. But painting it in a mood you're in, sometimes comes better than others, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes your mind is more at ease, and if you have, if you're thinking of something that's not related, you might not be able to make it. So there's a variety of different papers. Yes, I use Arches 140 cold press. It's made in France, and when they make the paper in a factory, uh, I took paper making on the Ryan School of Design. When they make a paper in a factory, they get a layer of paper, and then they put a binding, and then they put another paper. You see the different paper. Sometimes when you put a color, uh, it sucks in. All the colors goes into the watercolor. But this arches, I could scrub, I could do anything, I could beat it up. It's not cheap, it went, they went up to $4.25 a sheet. But out of sheet, I get two sheets. And a demonstration I use of half of that. I that was That's okay, not your fault. You know, I'm supposed to be sharp. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad you're asking questions. There's a rock here. There's a rock here, and there's a mean here. And I'll fix the rocks later, but I don't have time to do. Ooh, it's worth three of it. Um, there's green here. Oh. Now, notice how I'm using the brush. I mean, it's going downhill, sideways here. So I'm using the brush to fill the, the feeling, okay? It depends what you're doing. Now, that green, it's a color green. When I look, it's the only thing that jumps out to the green, right? Good. I mean, now I'll show you how to fix it. First of all, because it's wet, I could lift it up. Take a clean it. But I could tone it down. What's the opposite of green in a color wheel? Red. Red. Okay. Why not tone it down with red? I'm glad these things happen because that's how you learn how to fix things. So I'll tone it down with red. See, it's not so bad, the green. I might tone it down a little bit more afterwards or give a different green. I think here it's water. I lost the water. I use different paper, but my first teacher in the United States said to me, always use the best product, the best brushes, the best paint, because you never know when you get a masterpiece. Right. So I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> that was about four, 50 years ago. <laughs> see uh, see uh, the line here, then uh, activate my color, see what happened? But uh, I'm glad those things happen. I'm not ashamed. One, one person said to me, why are you telling that you make a mistake? I says, why not? You made it. How are we going to learn to fix it if you don't tell it? I mean, we all make mistakes. I'm not. OK. Now I'll do the grass. The grass is a color that I like very much. I use Ross Vienna. Notice I'm cleaning my palette a lot. I have a friend, excellent artist. She has a gallery in the, uh, a Wonka. She could paint a picture for her friend. She could pitch a picture so beautiful with mud. I can't. 
So, yeah, again, different personality. I get a clean up every time. <laughs> There's a boat down there that I've slightly drawn in. I'm supposed to put in some white, made in. Um, I'm not sure what I would do. This is mescoid, or mesquit, or drawing gum. Don't use it often. This, this smell, but some of it is not so bad that I have to throw away. I I mask it some. I wanted to put some daisy, even though the picture is not there. But I like to put some daisy and cover the book, push the book in the book, in the field, so it doesn't show up too much. And I'm going to do some weeds covering the boat. See, weeds. And it's really, there were daisy there, but this picture doesn't show the daisy that I saw, that I saw when I, uh, I'm just doing some lines. I might be sorry, but that's okay. I'm just a little calligraphy. Structures of the larger bushes or plants or something? That would be the, the front of the boat, and there's oh. a lot of weeds and flowers. Yeah. And then you look up. To go to the water, we had to go through the weeds. Yeah. And there was an old boat hiding under. And um, that's what I'm doing that for. Uh, and I'm going to let it dry for a minute. I don't use this too much, but for demonstration I think it's good because I got to get this done in about 15 minutes. And then I'm going to start how to do an iris. Um, if you touch it and it's dry, then you can go ahead and paint it. So I'm going to paint the, uh, the raw sienna, like I said, all over. And I try to leave some white spot if I remember to do that. Okay? So, yes. Now, see when water drips down, you take a dry brush and you just lift it up. Okay? So you don't have to worry about running into it. I might find this green be too warm. I won't know until I finish. Uh, some green in here, some green. Mostly green, this water. I want to push that green back. That green is too warm, it comes forward.
And if I don't see this dry spot, that doesn't bother me because I do want some white spots in between. I pass this around. This is to show my mistakes. We all make mistakes, don't we? Uh, it's called reducing glass. I reduce so the picture, it's, I don't know put this around, you could look at it. And <coughs> when I used to do portrait, we used to go okay. eight feet away from the model, and then you see your mistakes. But um, either looks good or looks bad, you know? <laughs> sometimes I don't like to use it because of that, because I don't want to see what I make the mistake for me. The boat is a blue, a bluish gray. So how you make gray? Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Now, I told that to the class. <coughs> the only problem is I use professional watercolor paint. If you use watercolor, they're not professional. The binding is more white inside. So when you mix the color, it's more opaque than transparent. So remember that. Where do you buy these? Uh, oh, okay. I, just, I use Vincent watercolor. There's the other different kind. But I'm so used to all of these colors. I have all kinds of colors. But you see, I clean my palette every time and then put flesh color. And then when I want it to use the palette again, I'll let it run under the water and remove a little film so I don't waste any paint. See the boat now showing? There's some white, I didn't draw it in, but there's some white, uh, which is the down seats, I guess. I can't go Oops. right up there. That's okay. Maybe we should Without. go right up there with that. You know. See, this is not a brush to use. But I'm not careful in the drawing, but that's okay. Nobody's going to find out that I made a mistake, except me. Well, you could see it, I made a mistake. I shouldn't say that, except me. Nobody could see it. You can tell it's Maine, though. You take one look at it, and you can tell it's in Maine. What do you mean? It, it, because of the the landscape, it's Maine. It looks you like can tell it? it? Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. When I went to Wesleyan, professor said, it doesn't matter how good your painting is. The song it gives you a feeling, whether it's a criticism of, of uh, the way life runs today, today, war picture, or happy, love, or whatever it is, you gotta give a feeling. Oh, that's good. Feeling on me? That's good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now I'll do the dark for the weeds. Dark for the weeds, I'll go with a little bit of purple. Why am I using purple? Contrast the of yellow? Yeah, contrast. And purple. And that's why I'm using purple. Uh, I'm using some purple. Uh, this is uh, mixing with yellow. So it's not quite clear purple. I want some nice clean purple. Knife. When I buy a new knife, you go on the, on the sidewalk 
and scrape it because it's too smooth, it cuts the paper. Mm -hmm. It's warmer. It seems warmer down here, up here. See, it's warmer up here than down in the bottom of the boat. These are things you look for. But if the warm <coughs> work doesn't work, if it's jumped out too much, then we gotta tone it down with some glue. Enough uh, ideas. Where did you buy that reduction glass? I bought it. Lewis, what was the name of the old glass company? Lewis, thank you. Lewis and uh, used to be in the Solomon Avenue. I found it 35 years ago. Yeah, Harvey, 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 Harvey Lewis. Harvey Lewis. Harvey Lewis. Harvey Lewis. They're still there. They're still there? Yeah. And really? Do you think the art store sell them? No, they're opticians. They, they might. They might. Yeah, this is a reducing glass. Yes, right. Yeah, and, and it's good because if you didn't have to go back eight feet to see how you can change the feet. Oh, I know where they are. see beautiful yellow. It must be flowers. Oh, this is a reducing glass. I cannot see it too. Even with my glasses, I cannot see it. Beautiful yellow. Some kind of bushes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now when it comes to these weeds, it should take more easy details. You cannot really rush it through. Because uh, you could be sloppy on the back because when you go back it drives together. Mm -hmm. When you come in front you got to give more details, okay? So sometimes it doesn't quite work right away. You have to work into it. Sponge. 
job you like. I don't know if you want to have that. I don't know what kind of chemical it has, but it erases beautifully. That's right. Do you need something? It is a piece. Huh? It erases beautifully. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. Tom Lynch mm -hmm. done a demonstration. I went to see a good friend and I, friends Kelly and I, went to visit Tom Lynch. And he said that not to use salt anymore on a painting. The museum purchased a painting of his with salt in it. The chemical of the salt eventually will rot the paper. So I don't know what this sponge does, but it does something because it, it removes the paint without scrubbing it with a knife or with us. Oh, see, it removes the paint. It's, it's magic. <laughs> I've done demonstration in Avon and showed them how to use it. And then I went to a demonstration, the girl says, Oh, Lucy's here. She's the one who told me about this magic sponge. <laughs> but you could pay four dollars and twenty-five cents, or you could go at job lot for a dollar you get two. Is that in the Arctic Garden area? Jabla. Jabla. It's uh. I mean, it's the sponge in the where they have the paint in Jabla. Uh, Jabla. The sponge is where they have cleaning solution. Oh, okay, and is that size or is that? Compared? No, it's a it's a regular uh, oh. magic eraser that you buy. The name oh. is magic eraser, okay. but it. this it doesn't say magic eraser. But there's a chemical in there, so okay. I'm telling you, it's very good. But I don't know what's inside. If you wanted to preserve your painting for a hundred years, I don't know. <laughs> I bet I come up for myself. <laughs> then I have a brush that I, I call it my magic brush. But somehow it's a small brush and I never find it. Ever have a brush that gets lost? Here it is. It has separation from hair. See, it's it's uh, it's made that way. See how it's it's uh, it's like a, I think. Oh, I use it for those uh, trees. I use I use it to use the, make those trees. But anyway, I'm using this to put the grass over the over the boat. There's a soft rounded grass. See, I didn't have to do it every single brim or every single uh, blade of grass. It's just Weathering the paint, weathering it, like to be yes. like the boat. Yeah, well, I'm trying to push the boat back. I haven't done much on the boat because it takes time to do the boat. Yeah. But I just want to tell you that's how I start off. To finish a painting like this, it takes more than an hour. Mm -hmm. 
unfortunately, because it's a big painting. And because I stop and talk about it, I lose my concentration. So what was that before doing, you know? <laughs> I do. Well, it's true. My concentration's not like it used to be. I have about 50 sheets. Just want a daisy, just for yeah, some center, yeah. and then push it back. I, if I wanted to push this back, I have to put it inside to the wall, make it darker, dark against light, light against dark. Magic to work, dark against light, light, light against dark, dark against light. Um, if I make this boat at the edge of the boat, let's see if I could do a straight line now. <coughs> then I take the dark. Remember I told you I push it back. I don't want a line. I want people to know what I was that I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and then you make the dark here and then you push it down because the boat it's concave inside. Can you guys feel the roundness of the boat? This is the seat. It's an old boat, so you can make a raft and look and it doesn't matter because it's in the, it's probably been there for years. <laughs> Next to the dark, I put a shadow and leave a white line. Uh, there's a white line. What happens if I forget about the white line? No problem. You take a little bit of uh, magic white and you pull the blue line back into it again.
you could make a W, you could make an L, you could make a C, you could make an M. If you use a letter so your eyes go in and out of the picture, I tried, I said, in the abstract, I did not make it. Abstract is altogether different, a different things. You track the color, it's your color. You balance your colors. But in this, in this case, I'll emphasize, put some lights in, I'll emphasize in this shape. You see the S yes shape? Mm -hmm. and I put something very bright in here to bring my eyes. So the color follows the, the shape, but you don't have to spell it out. It's in your mind. You have to understand that, that you need a shape to follow your color. That's the best we'll do with this one, and I will do a quick iris and show you how to do a simple iris. Uh, I don't even know what I've done. I have to look and see. But you see, this is what I can go for, for today. Oh, Even though it's not finished, you could see the difference. And I'm going to pass it around, and maybe you could take a coffee break or something, and I sit up. I always use the tape, and I'm very careful to put an edge very closely together. Because at, at times, a tank of uh, a seal, right, Jean?
<laughs> when somebody behind you says, stop it. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's very easy to overdone a work. That picture that I've done there, that won the uh, National Watercolor Award, I've done it, it was altogether a different picture. And then something came to my mind. My husband liked to go fishing, really. And I said, gee, I'm going to make a mood rather than the spot. And uh, that's what I call it, early morning light. Don't ask me. It just came out, out of my head. Uh, I work differently. Depends. I use. I, I shouldn't say. I, I depends on the mood. I shouldn't say that. But depends. Sometimes you make a mistake in a painting. You don't want it. You don't want it uh, corrected because that mistake it really looks better than the original <laughs> idea. So you work on it. So don't be afraid to make a mistake. And mistake that one of my students, beginner class, always make, and I could point it out, they make the trees like thick fingers like mine. Remember, even though we don't see it, the very thin lines almost disappear into the sky. And look at the trees. Well, don't look while you're driving, because one lady said, I almost got into an accident. I was so excited <laughs> about the trees. I forgot what I was doing. So, but do study the nature. I mean, it's right there. You cannot help it, but it's beautiful. And I will do a quick demonstration of an iris. And I'm gonna do a little picture of my of my of my irises. I uh, Yes, I take all the photographs. I always pay for my photographs. So these are my irises that I had. I don't know what happened this winter. And then I have references. When I send away for bulbs, they send me some of the pictures. Yeah. But I do a quick drawing in a quick, in a small piece of paper. I got a board ready. And you cook it up and uh, if you want to. Yes, please. Let me take the brush out. Did I help you enough with this? Did you learn something? Yes. What? Do you take art in school? Huh? You don't pay? That's right. I think it's good. Yes. You know. Right? You paint? Yes. Oh, you paint? Oil? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Uh, oh, it's a nice school. Good teachers there. Very good. Yeah. Um, I, um, I started painting in Italy, drawing, when I was, I went to private school. In Italy, during the war, they tried to keep me out of the, the war, or the mischief. I was kind of a little mischief, little girl. <laughs> anyway, um, I started drawing, and what we've done, we just drawn. They cannot afford painting, because it's during the war, and they use all the war money, not on a school, like there was, a, they used, we used to, we used to saw the uh, sewing class, economics. I was eight years old, but they teach you how to sew. But they need the, uh, the sewing machine, they need the iron for the work, so they took all away. So Mussolini, which is the dictator at that time in Italy, made us tell all the family to go out and get a sheep. Even though we did not have a place to keep it, but we put it in a, like a garage, a little, uh, little entrance. We kept the sheep. We had to take care of the sheep, remove the wool. We had to learn how to spin the wheel, make a sauce, and that's what they taught us. Use whatever we have without using the war things, which they were taking all the iron. They went around and took all the gold away from people because they needed it for the war. Okay. I'm going to clean 
my palette because I have different colors. In, like I said, I'm a mid, I keep cleaning my stuff. Are there different qualities of, of watercolor paint? Oh yes. On oh yes. Whatever the binder I went to AC, AC Moore. I went to get. I get it. It's a coupon and Sunday paper. Uh huh. Forty percent off. There was one that said fifty-five percent off one day only. Uh -huh. So I went, and I, my husband got another coupon from a relative. I went and I bought a Colbert Blue. The Colbert Blue there was twenty four ninety five for the two of, of Colbert Blue watercolor paint. paint. I got it for eleven dollars, and wow. I had twenty five plus another fifty five plus another twenty five percent. So that's where I get my tools. I buy it whenever there's a sale because they can way out of the way. I remember we paid eleven dollars for without the sale. Now it was twenty four ninety nine for Cerulean Blue. It's number four. But this is uh, not a small tool. This is a uh, four, I think it's four millimeter. Mm -hmm. no. Is it millimeter? No, what is it? Seven four. Centimeter. Centimeter, yes, millimeter. Yeah, so this is the bigger tool. Mm -hmm. Then they have the smaller tool. But you could, um, it's, it's wonderful how you, uh, you could find discount. Now, I have students that went to job lab, not no job lab because I go there for my sponges and other things, mm -hmm. but they bought paint from job lab. I want to show a demonstration of different color. I took my color, I took another brand that I have, which is professional tool, and I took her brand. When she put it down, she was surprised how much binding was on the tool that it almost make the color milky. And that's what it is, it's the binding. Mm -hmm. It was not pure color. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, but she's got some nice painting out of it. I help her to do the best of what she got. What kind of paints are these for you? I use only Winsor Newton. Oh, take it back. I have some old cup, uh, a purple and old line. I love old line. I went to a demonstration, a workshop, I spent $200 old line. Now I got old line. I got Winsor Newton. And then a friend of mine passed away, and her husband gave me 12 tool or Daniel Smith, which is uh, in Washington State. It's beautiful color, they call metallic colors. So I got a lot of colors. But somehow I keep going back to the same. OK, I'm going to make a big iris. I'm drawing in with. Uh, I don't know. This it's not an H pencil. You know why it's not? Because there's somebody's name on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you go and pick up and they give you a white pencil. <laughs> I'm always using it because when I do the puzzle, I need pencil. Well, I don't add too much to the other side. Sort of uh, when I done the daisy one time. And they made me take the daisy apart and study the flowers. When I done a seagull, they made us go down the beach and offer the dead seagulls. So know your anatomy, whether it's a flower, a seagull, or what I do, it brings flowers in my house all the time, even these. And just study them, just look at them. Have a cup of coffee and look at the painting so you could feel it, take it apart when they just dying, so you see what's inside. So that's how you learn. Thank you. Very much. So I'm not really. I, I think I know my um, I know my iris because I grow them. Like I said, I don't know if the if the squirrel were so desperate, they might even end up eating those. Never put something in the middle of a painting. Uh, composition, you t if you, this space between this and the stem, and this space between this and the stem, it's different. So push it, push it out, push it away from, so it will not be in the center. Why is that, Luciana? Why? Yes. Because commercially, you do. But professionally, you don't want anything to divide the paper in a half. 
It's going to stagnate the, the movement, the flow? Yes, yes the flow. Yeah. The design. Mm -hmm. That's in composition. That's what I was told. Not necessarily so, but, <laughs> you know, I don't believe everything I was told either. <coughs> but uh, I find they're studying composition with uh, Wesleyan and University of Harvard and different teacher, and they all make sense. We feel the same thing. Okay, I'm going to make a quick, quick stroke, flowers, and few trays. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it's a purple flower. I'm going to put a touch of red in it because I want it just purple. I'm the creator now. I can do what I want. <laughs> I'm drawing in with a brush. Notice that? With a brush. I'm 
doing it while it's wet. I'm hoping that the water will run because I wanted those um, I want those little fuzzy on top of uh, our to blend in. And I'm taking the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Lift up some of the lights. And you see, even when I lift up the lights, I'm not doing this straight. I'm doing the contour of the flowers. Whether you do an apple or pear or flowers, in this case, that's what this is. Um, this is darker, dark against light, so I'm going to use this a little bit. the room until 4.30, so if we run over, it's okay. No, but uh, I, uh, I'm losing my voice. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know she was. Do you want a drink of orange juice? No, that's okay. I think I had a cold before, so. Those brushes have numbers on them. Oh. Yeah. Well, this doesn't. It says one stroke brush. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is about sixty dollars. Camel's hair. Yeah. Camel uh, stroke. Uh, sable. Sable. Ah. Sable is the best. Well, what's the other uh, fur coat? Not sable. The other one. Right. Em 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 oh. Emerald. 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 Oh. That's the best. But you know, there's a limit that I pay the brushes. The most expensive brush would be one hundred and twenty dollars. So maybe on our website, eastharfordartleague.org, we'll have a little place where we can have people who have things for to give away or to trade brushes, paints, what type they are, what year they are. It sounds like something that every artist needs. Well, yeah, brushes. Uh, I mean. Some people make miracles with brushes too, like they make a paint. Um, I don't know if I'm spoiled or just uh, different. Brushes get worn out though. They do, yeah. especially when you do side way, you know, the yeah. other way. And then when they get worn out, they're not good for anybody. The only thing I could do, if I can oil, uh, you could take it and cut the fur, cut the hair, cut it down so you get a little smaller brush. Mm -hmm. 
but sometimes you might end up with two or three of the same one and you want to trade up or something. I don't know. It's just a thought. I got five or six of the same one. But this is your livelihood, so. Oh, no, I mean, yeah, some people might want to get rid of it. Maybe. Like Jean would say, Jean Bryan, she had a person that belonged to the club and the father died. And uh, all the art supply was given to the Wednesday Life League. So she had a sale and she was selling the very cheap brushes, oil oh, paint, and everything. Yeah. Yeah, so yep. uh, you never know. It's good to know. You're right. You never know. And some people might like to uh, want to give up watercolor and do something else, you know, yeah. sculpture or something. Oh, yeah. And you'll see in the paper sometimes. And, and in our I see, I see it in the text. Yes, and in our Manchester reminder, a good neighbor, you can put in and say, I am a beginning artist. I'm interested in any donations of nice art supplies. If you have them, please call me. And believe it or not, the next week you'll see, you can call, the artist who wants art supplies can call this number, this number, and this number. It's just amazing. Yeah. People uh, have yeah. it in oh, their I attic. I believe that because there's a lot of people, like uh, one of my students, she says an aunt died and she gave all these beautiful brushes. Yeah. And she spent $260 per brushes. brushes. Yeah. Yeah, you never know. You never know you never unless know you a friend or somebody that doesn't paint anymore. Right, exactly. Yeah. No, that's true. And that will bring more people to log on to our website too, so. Even if we had just a couple a week, it, it sounds like something we could do. Yeah, it's, it's better than not having it, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's worth it just to go in and check different sites out and things like that. Mm -hmm. okay, I'll, I'll get my mom to donate some things too. She does barely paints anymore because of her arthritis in her hands. Yeah. So she might be my first person to donate. She's not making anymore? She can hardly. Well, she does a little bit, but she doesn't feel so good. 87, you know. 87? God She's 87, her. God bless her. Yep. Well, you never know when you have to give up, you know? You never mm -hmm. know. So uh, it's a good point because I don't know what my daughter would do with all my stuff. To be honest with you, something happened to me. And I have a lot of good stuff. And I hate to see it just going away. I bet they will see somebody that could use it. That's for sure. How do you get a feeling of texture when you're using watercolor? I'm sorry? I said, how do you get a feeling of texture when you're using watercolor? A texture? Well, a texture, man-made texture, or in the painting? In the painting. If you mix cerulean blue, ultramarine, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna, they have um, a texture. They they make like little, uh, what do you call it, granulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you go to buy our supplies, you buy you ask for the pamphlet or that brand that you buy. Mm -hmm. And they tell you which is transparent, which is granular. And then if you mix these two colors, it gives you like a texture. You uh, artificial texture with a pencil or a, a spray or natural texture. Uh, that's all I'm gonna do because I'm getting tired and I'm losing, I'm not gonna come down the cold, but I'm losing my voice. And, uh, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to discourage you, but uh, give you an idea how I go about to do it. I mean, this is, it takes me to do some of this, it takes me the wrong than this, but I want to show you how to do this, Chinese way. Uh, the petals of the leaves, it's uh, one stroke, a brush has a heel and a toe. Anybody know that? No. A heel, a toe, and a heel. You go up with your toe, you twist your brush, and you come down with your heel. And then, texture, question of texture. 
I would just put my lines in and pencil or a silhouette and I get beautiful lines. So, uh, <coughs> That's, the, that's calligraphy. I don't know. If, do they teach calligraphy in school anymore? Mm -hmm. They do, huh? Yeah. I like the feeling of calligraphy. Just a quick demonstration, like I said, I was going to do of uh, irises and